a bat. A wolf's head. A crab. Death. Death. I have the results of your MRI scans. Everything seems to be normal. There is no physical damage from the accident. However, I am worried about your psychological condition. I know it's not easy, but you've got to start over, Ethan. You're not responsible for what happened. It's my fault Jason is dead. He'd still be alive if I'd been looking out for him. It was an accident. Accidents happen every day. You can't blame yourself forever for your son's death. How is Sean? He's a very solitary kid, you know, very focused within himself. He's really close to his mother. With me, he's more distant. And what about you, Ethan? What do you feel? I no longer want to live. I have no reason to continue. Not even for your son, Sean. I couldn't save Jason. Sean doesn't need a father like me. Is there something else you wanted to tell me, Ethan? I sometimes have these blackouts, times when I don't know what I'm doing. I recover consciousness sometime later, but I'm someplace else, and I have no idea how I got there. Do you think this could be related to the accident? You suffered a massive concussion and were in a coma for six months. We really don't know what effect a shock like that can have on the brain. That's the end of this session. Uh, we'll continue this conversation next week. You were lucky, Ethan. It's very rare to survive such a traumatic accident. I don't exactly feel lucky, Doctor. You want to eat something? Is something the matter, Sean? No, I'm all right. How did things go at school today? The teacher yelled at me for being late again. She's going to send me home the next time it happens. I'm sorry about that, Sean. Next time, we'll really pull it together, okay? Aren't you gonna go play with the other kids? I don't feel like it. I haven't been on a seesaw in a long time. What do you think? Yeah! Come on, Dad! Make me fly!
I would like a packet of strawberry flavored chewies, please. Thanks. Hey, I got you some chewies. I hate strawberry. Thanks. It was nice of you anyway. Should have known he doesn't like strawberry. Don't even know my own son anymore. I'll find something else to do with him. Maybe you're right on the merry-go-round. Saw a boomerang in his bag. Used to be pretty good with one of those. Maybe he'd like to have a turn on the swings. A boomerang? You know how to use it? No, not really. I can never make it come back. Can I give it a try? You did it, Dad. Do you want to give it a try? I won't be able to do it. Oh, come on. Let's try it together. Now, the main thing is to get the right position at the beginning. Now, you've got to throw it straight and a little to the right. Now, throw it. Good job, Sean. See? That wasn't so hard. Like rain's coming. I think we better go. Okay. You know, sometimes I remember before, I mean, when Jason was still here, sometimes I wish everything could just be the way it was before. Me too, Sean. Me too. Hey, Dad, can I have a ride on the carousel? Can I? Sure. Go pick a horse and get on. I'll get a ticket. One, please. That's a dollar.
Sean, where are you? Sean! Do you think it's going to take long? No, he should be finished soon. Let's get the formalities out of the way so I can get back to some real work. God, I'm bored. I hate having nothing to do. I gotta see Captain Perry. Orders are orders. Gee, I hate internal politics bullshit. I could go for a little Larry time right about now. I'm off, Charlene. I'll look at the reports later. I'll cancel all appointments for this afternoon. Okay. Oh, Captain. Agent Norman Jaden from the FBI is here. Jaden, of course. We've been expecting you. I'm in a bit of a hurry. Do you mind tagging along? We can talk as we walk. Yeah, of course. I wanted to introduce myself before getting started, but uh, perhaps there's a better no, time. No, no. it's fine. I just have to get to the press conference. We have them every day now. Believe me, it's not always easy finding something to tell them. Fortunately, today we have some news. Have you met Lieutenant Blake yet? Yeah, we met this morning. He has his own methods, but he's a good cop. I'm sure you'll get them well together. Do you know how to tie a knot in a necktie? I guess. To be frank with you, I could have done without the FBI on this one, but the press they're all over us. This origami killer case crept up on us, and it's fast becoming a national concern. There are hundreds of killers in this country, but what do you know? This guy is exotic. He leaves flowers and origami figures. Work that one out. Then the press get onto it, and we suddenly become the center of the universe. I'm here to arrest a serial killer. With all due respect, sir, the rest of it is none of my business. Oh, 
Of course not. All I'm asking is that you make progress, and fast. The press want a perpetrator, and we're gonna have to serve him up on a silver platter. Hmm. Not bad. Oh, go see Charlie and she'll show you to your office. Yeah, check in on the press conference if you're interested. It'll give you an idea of the political climate around here. Thank you, sir. Welcome to the club, Jaden. Captain Perry is doing his press conference now. Might be interesting to have a look. I'll have a look around the station. Stretch my legs for a bit. Think I need a good cup of java. I should get Perry's assistant to show me my office. I can't wait to get to work. Strange character, Captain Perry. Seems to be more interested in meeting the press than investigating the crime. I'm dying of thirst. Where's the water cooler when you need one? I saw Blake when I arrived. Maybe I should go talk to him. I'm ready to start. Maybe we should kick off by talking about the case? I have some work to finish here. Let's talk about that later, if you don't mind. Okay. Uh, no problem. Just let me know when you're available. Nice watch. Oh, it's the present we offer to our new lieutenants. We bought the same model each year for the past 20 years for each promotion. It optimizes everybody's time, and it's the kind of thing that always goes down well. You can contribute to our fund if you like, or still a few dollars short. Congratulate Larry on my behalf. I'll be sure to do that, sir. Captain Perry said you could show me to my office? Yes, of course. Follow me. This? This is my office? That's where I was told to take you. If you need anything, you know where to find me. Okay, time to work. Step one, 
Change the office. Eight victims in the last three years. All boys, aged between nine and 13. No signs of violence. The victims disappear from public places in broad daylight. No one notices anything. Bodies are found three to five days later, drowned in rainwater. There is always a railroad line adjacent to where the bodies are found. And all the victims disappeared in the fall. The killer has a large comfort zone. He gained confidence rapidly and moved away from his base. Hmm, this won't make the geoprofiling any easier. Always the same ritual. An origami in the hand, an orchid on the chest. The victims have always been dead for less than six hours when they were found, which means they remained alive for several days before being drowned. Over 3,500 people questioned. Over 100 suspects interrogated. Not a single lead to go on. The killer is white, aged between 30 and 45. He is intelligent, calm, and determined. An organized type. He has a car. He's probably employed, but his work allows him free time. Killer's car is probably a Chevrolet Malibu 83. species. That doesn't help much. The orchid is a common species. It can be found at any flower shop. No 
prints or specific clues. Hmm. Nothing much to go on. Just one origami store in town. Here we go again. I better go wash my face. I need to take some. I'm gonna faint if I resist. That's all right. I know I can make it. I know. Here we go again. I better go wash my face. I, I gotta have it. I gotta j just this once. I... I... I gotta hang on. I can beat this. <sighs> the bathroom. Need to find a... a, a safe place. Oh, I, I feel like crap. I need it. I... I'll feel better. Ah... Uh, the bathroom. No one will know. It's gonna be alright. Don't break down. I can do without it. I can do without it! Is everything all right, sir? No one must see. This is Lieutenant Blake, Mr. Marsh. Could you please tell him what happened? It, it was this afternoon. I went to the park with my son, Sean. We played together for a while, and then he wanted to go on the carousel, so I put him on one of the wooden horses, and when I turned back, Sean had disappeared. Exactly what time did you arrive at the park? Try to remember exactly, Mr. Mars. Every detail can be important. It must have been about... Four forty-five, I think. I'm not really sure. What was your son wearing when he disappeared? He was wearing a coat. A green coat. And a pair of pants. Brown pants. How could Sean have disappeared without you even noticing? Weren't you right by the carousel? I went to sit on a bench a little way off. I didn't notice right away the carousel had stopped. That must have been when Sean disappeared. 
You say you took your son to the park after school. But you didn't report him missing until 8.15. Why did it take you so long to contact the police? I... I don't know. I panicked. I didn't know what to do. Did Sean have any particular difficulties, Mr. Mars? Anything that might have caused him to run away? Uh, no. No, I don't think so. Everything okay at school? Any particular problems between you and your wife? Uh, my wife and I have been separated for the last six months. But Sean would not have gone off without telling his mother or me. All right. That's all the questions I have for now. You're free to go, Mr. Mars. We'll continue to look for Sean overnight. We'll contact you if we have any more questions. Do... Do you think the origami killer... Listen, your son's probably just run off and he'll turn up in a couple of hours. But what if it is the origami killer? Well, then we have about four days to find him alive. Did they find something? No, nothing yet, but they're gonna keep looking through the night. Do they... do they think it's the origami killer? It, it, it's still too early to say... but it is a possibility. What happened, Ethan? How could you lose Sean like that? You should never have taken your eyes off him. I mean, for God's sake, how hard is it to keep your eye on a child in the park? Why did you leave him, Ethan? Why? Wasn't it enough losing Jason? I'm sorry. It's not what I meant to say. <laughs> 